In this lesson, we are looking at changing ecosystems. We have three main dot points and two pieces of uh, guidance from our syllabus. Right, our current focus is on change that makes sense, right? And this might be spatial change, so the type of change you see moving through the same area, so similar to stratification or zonation on a shore ecosystem, or it might be temporal, so change over time, like we would see in ecological succession. We monitor both temporal and spatial changes through sampling, which collects data, makes sense, right? This data is able to inform us and help us to draw conclusions about changes that might have happened a long time ago or predict changes that will happen in the future. We collect data from the distant past and the current time and consider how our current use of the ecosystems will impact them in the future. Now, ecological data which shows evidence of the past can be found in the fossil record. Okay? As the, land, uh, as the land masses on Earth changed over millions of years, so did the environments on and around them. And the fossil record uses all of the fossil evidence, which has been analysed and chronologically ordered to infer what our ecosystems were like over a huge period um, of time in our past. Plenty of clues to come out of that fossil record. So fossils in rock strata can indicate relative age based on their presence relative to other layers. Uh, if there are marine organisms or fossils found, it can indicate where marine environments existed that now do not. Uh, and the rock type can give us clues as to the type of ecosystem. So sedimentary rock indicates that some type of water would have settled deposits. Igneous rock might indicate that volcanic activities occurred, so that might be a disturbance that may have uh, caused new land to form. Now ice cores can also be used by scientists to determine um, the, the atmospheric conditions back in the past based on the air trapped inside the ice. There are leaf fossils that show the density of stomata and it, that can indicate the CO2 levels in the atmosphere at the time. So in leaves with a lower density of stomata we can infer that there was a greater concentration of CO2 in the air and as it decreased leaves needed to adapt by increasing their stomatal density to more efficiently capture the gas in the air um, for use for photosynthesis. Anatomy, like teeth, can be used to infer the diets of certain organisms and the presence of particular plants um, in the time period in which they existed. Microfossils have smaller temperature um, tolerance, so their presence or absence in a particular period uh, can, can help us to infer the approximate ocean temperatures. Uh, and pollen grain presence or absence can indicate, again, what type of certain plants were uh, had evolved into existence by that stage. Now, in the present time, obviously, we sample ecosystems uh, to get indications on so many things, and all of that helps us to monitor, manage, and conserve the ecosystem moving forward. Now, in order to make justified decisions in order to manage those ecosystems, the current data is used and turned into models to make evidence-based predictions. So if we monitor an area undergoing primary succession, like this on Surtsey Island, then we can actually pay attention to all the types of species that arise and in what order and the biodiversity and the biomass and the abiotic and biotic factors. So we can make scientific models which can be used in future scenarios to predict uh, what will occur in similar scenarios. Those predictions might be about how to best manage, conserve, recover, whatever it is after a disturbance how long it might take a pioneer species to dominate before being outcompeted in an area of primary succession, or how long we can expect larger populations of case-selected species to enter an area after primary succession starts, right? Plenty of things. In this situation, we're looking at Surtsey Island versus Mount St. Helens Island. Given the time periods, you know, different numbers of species will arise. In this situation, we're looking at time since a fire and then the height of certain vegetation in the area. And here we've got the percentage cover of different algae species uh, if you place a, a tie inside a, a coral reef and see what happens. So we can certainly see this bushfire scenario in Australia more recently in places like Kangaroo Island in the fires in 2019 and 2020. With such a huge loss of biodiversity and consequence, uh, sorry, loss of habitat and then consequently the biodiversity. It's really vital that conservationists and scientists knew how to assist in the recovery of the area. So, you know, we're talking new species moving in and scientists needing to have a new plan of attack about how to manage that recovery. Now, using the models that we build from current data, we predict the outcome of future ecosystem changes, not only from natural events like bushfires, but disturbances that our society actually inflicts on the environment ourselves. Now, humans were once one species, um, species among countless others. 
But now there are very few areas around the world that remain untouched or unchanged by our activities. So we've changed the features of the land, the composition of the atmosphere, the composition of the ocean. Um, we've even changed the genetic makeup and characteristics of species. So we have the capability to keep changing things at a really rapid rate. It's really vital for us to be able to balance the idea of maintaining our current lifestyle with the sustainability of ecological systems. We have to ensure that biodiversity at all levels is maintained. Now, I'm only going to briefly touch on some of the human impacts um, to our environment with the view of exploring more of these in class. And each of them has huge flow on effects for so many elements of our ecosystem and our society. We could spend hours studying the effects of these and in fact, some scientists make this their life's work, right? We talked about land clearing. It stems from so many other impacts like agriculture, urbanization, resource harvesting, like logging and mining. And it leads to things like habitat fragmentation, loss of diversity, dry land, salinity, erosion, soil degradation, and zoonotic diseases increasing in frequency. If we look at the rising CO2 levels in our atmosphere, um, it in turn causes so many problems, right? Altered producer productivity, which can lead to increased transpiration, all of that can actually lead to atmospheric heat retention, unbalanced carbon and water cycles, and eventually those sea levels rising. New and introduced species occur through habitat loss, right? Meaning new organisms may migrate into the area and compete with native organisms uh, for resources and unbalanced food webs and niches and all those kinds of things. In over-exploitation of any natural resource, we're talking logging, fishing, hunting, right? Similarly, they're going to impact those biotic interactions and habitats. Genetic modification and selective breeding in agriculture is really common and it changes the balance of genetic diversity and planting monocultures leads to the unsustainable use of land through farming practices. So we're talking fertilizers and pesticides, which can then impact nutrient cycles and pollute environments. Now, when predicting future impacts of our current environmental activities, the flow and effects for so many elements must be considered. We're talking things like organism interactions, abiotic factors, the, inter, you know, the interaction between those two things in an ecosystem, population numbers and demographics, succession, biodiversity, the classification of that ecosystem and the way it is managed. So this is literally every single topic we've studied in Unit 3 Ecology. We know that the interconnectedness of ecosystems is so incredibly complex and that's why these impacts have such wide stretching uh, consequences and they need to be considered in future modelling. So again, three main dot points from our um, syllabus here and some pieces of guidance to help us along.